this gig economy shit and Uber, Uber in particular. When I first went to Bolivia, um, well, I went to Chile and, and then Argentina and hung out with Isabel Supe in, in, in um, Mendoza for a while. And we talked about various things. We, we set up this climbing website we, we called um, climbingsouthamerica.info and the idea was to to connect climbers to services like muleros, porters, hostels, routes, climbing routes, bus systems, bus transport, public transport because in South America it's it's fairly complicated and fairly fluid you know you've just got to know the place to go to get the bus um, and that sort of stuff needs to be updated so the plan was that we we'd run this site and and keep it updated and sell advertising for you know good products like North Face and we even spoofed North Face animated banner ads and things like this and gave them free advertising because they their shit's good and we didn't think anybody we I didn't think anybody would object to my advertising them and we set all this up and the idea also was that we would do ride sharing we would do lift sharing so because often you know climbers like Max and his friends used to come over to Bolivia in a car from Brazil and, uh, and maybe there were people who would want to take a car and have have room, and they could they could hook into the system and, and help other people. And I mean, I could see that I could see that uh, there was a lot of potential in the whole thing. And I, uh, my plan was to was to, to use that and and build a kind of responsible tourism that connected people with the local suppliers and stuff. But uh, instead, some fucking mega company called Uber shows up. Climbing South America didn't get anywhere. I couldn't make any money, couldn't get anyone to cooperate. The UK climbing people wouldn't, didn't want to cooperate or connect. Um, just, you know, general non-cooperation. And, and the whole thing was based on some crappy PHP pile of public library, public code full of back doors and trap doors and god knows what. I can't even remember the name of the system, but I, I knew those systems were junk. I knew those systems were deadly uh, long before. You've got to write this stuff yourself. Haven't you, Simon Thornton? I wrote all that stuff for you for a website so that you could sign in, you could log in, you could do transactions fairly securely, you could take out. I went to Russ, uh, Russ Anderson at the computer lab and I said, as a project, could we do a security audit of the system that I've done? I just wanted the attention of someone to what are the problems with with cookies and sign-ons and, and captures and all of this. And I thought we'd learn something from it. And Ross just wasn't cooperative either. And in the end, I gave all that code that I developed, which was quite a lot of a system, I gave it to Brian. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Brian, I've forgotten his surname. Hardware Brian in the... Uh, in Andy Hopper's group. And I don't know what happened to it, but it was all just pearl. Fairly plain pearl without hauling in billions of billions of potential subversive trapdoors from CPAN. Things like CPAN and all of those module all that, that whole so-called ecosystem for sucking bits of software out of things is junk. You can't do it like that. Because nobody can inspect the code, nobody can check it, nobody does check it, and it ends up being subverted. So 
So that's my story of web commerce and ride sharing. Doesn't work.